Hey guys, Rich Page, our Jonathan Timber Frame Company, the main timber framer. Today I want to talk a little bit about the skill. Uh, they call it the carpentry saw, 16 inch chainsaw. I had been sharing some comments back and forth by Rompus Trumper. I hope I pronounced that right. And I initially looked at a Marvel ZSX uh, quite a while back. I had a quick demo over at Timberwolf Tools. And I said to myself, why would I ever need that saw? And after commenting back and forth with Ramos Dropper, uh, what I thought about was how to cut my timbers. And when you make your initial cut, you know, once you get them off the sawmill, you've got a you've got an end that's come off a uh, slasher or, or whatever, a cut to length machine, but it's not square. So inevitably you're cutting and you're squaring up every timber every time just to get going. So what I thought about after our conversations, and I thought I'd never need one of these saws, is maybe this saw will be the way to go to square up your timber to start with. Uh, so let me talk to you a little bit about the saw. I don't want to come off as an expert on the saw because I just picked it up uh, just a couple days ago. I've been putzing around with it, but I want to show you a little bit about it, how I'm going to use it, and certainly want some comments and feedback. So let's get going. I'm going to move the camera around and show you a little bit about the saw. All right, so this is the saw. You've probably seen some videos on it, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. One of the things I like about Skill is I, li I like their, their tool holding arrangement. So this thing's got its own little, little uh, setup here. Uh, you can see these clamps. So if you clamp it in position, you can pick it up by the handle and uh, you can tote it around, set it on the floor, and you don't have to worry about scuffing up the chain or scuffing up the saw. So when it comes to that, I think Skill's got it knocked out pretty well. I also have their uh, 16 and uh, 5 16 saw. They've got, a, they've got a carriage for that as well, and it works great. With respect to this saw, a couple things I want to show you uh, about this saw. You know, it's a chainsaw. So I went in, set it up. You know, I got the chain set up pretty well here. That's about what you want for tension on that. I checked it initially coming off with the uh, the the blade, if you will, or the bar squareness to the deck. It was probably off uh, a degree or two, so I squared that up. Uh, and then what you've got to do up here, you see where they're pretty smart is they got some bar chain oil to this thing. So unlike a Prazi, uh, and I've got a Prazi, and I I don't care for those at all. But un unlike that stuff, these things have a have an oiler, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. So pretty much straightforward set up like a saw. What I like about it is the depth of cut. I do a lot of eight by eight. So I'm thinking I'm going to use this to make the initial squared up cut on an eight by eight. What I've got set up over here is a six by 10. And you can see because uh, it's, the saw is new to me, and at the same time, it doesn't give you a cut like a circular saw, and you've got some chips coming off on the top. Let me show you what this cut looks like, and I'm going to make a cut afterwards and show you that as well. But you can see the, the top edge. So if you have a line there, you know, you might, you're might you going to end up taking your line off so you don't know where you are. So in that case, I set this up with a fence and an offset so that initially as I get used to this saw, I know at least I'm going to be pushing the saw straight across the timber. So that'll allow me to make an assessment. Is this saw cutting straight and true? And uh, I'm going to take my uh, bias or if I don't operate it quite as straight as I need to out of the equation. So that's what we've got for this saw. The other thing, uh, I'm going to set this down over here. I'm going to take the saw out of its cradle. Tip this down a little bit here. Let me take this out of the cradle and put the cradle on the floor and set it down like this. A couple things on this saw uh, that I liked, let me see what you're looking at here, is this feature here where you can set this up so rather than cutting and trying to bring 14 inches of saw into the wood all at once, by setting this up on an angle, you're going to start here, and then you'll cut across, feeding a portion of the saw in, which will going to, it's going to give you a better starting point, less aggressive trying to take uh, 14 inches or 8 inches out all at once. So I like this setup here, just a, you know your typical thumb screw. Your table can come like this. Uh, it's got some graduations on there. Here's my graduation. It's either on the bottom or it's squared up on the top. So there's also a setting for uh, where, this, where this position lies straight to square up your bar over here. So you can set that up to make sure your bar is perpendicular to your table. That's a setting that you can fool with also. Uh, down below here, I'm going to have to 
spin this around, try to move the camera around and show you. Grab the camera. So down below here, you can see, this is basically a thumb screw down here. You'll see there's a spring on the thumb screw, and that's only there to hold your riving knife against your bar so that your riving knife is not flopping all around. Uh, you don't cinch it down. Basically, I've got this thing screwed down finger tight. It holds the bar in position, and it lines it up pretty much perfectly with your riving knife, and that's all that setup is designed to do. So that's what you've got down there. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool about this, let me set this down for a minute, flip it over and show you, is this setup right here is designed to hold the wood down. So as you're, as you're feeding across like this, this is to hold the wood down to minimize the amount of chips coming up uh, or the breakout that you're going to get from your chain. Now on the down cut, let me come over here to this timber that I've already cut. You'll see on the down cut, you get a really nice cut here. And what that, what this feature is trying to control here is how much breakout you're getting on the return or the up stroke of that chain. So that's what you're getting with this in the down position. Uh, so you've got this much space in between here and the chain on both sides that's trying to manage how much breakout you're going to get up here. So let me see if I can get So you can see how much breakout you're getting. In the big scheme of things, that's not that bad. Now, what I plan to do with this, let me back up a little bit, is once I square up an end of a timber... I'm going to come in three and a half inches and I'm going to do a cheat cut with a ten and a quarter saw and then what I'm going to have remaining, if I do my cheat cut across the top up here, take out this material here, do the same thing on the bottom down here, basically the, what I'm going to have for this finish is going to be the end of the tenon. I can live with that. Uh, and at the same time for my tenons, and using the uh, the muffle mortiser, I round them off with the uh, with a one inch round off on both sides. So frankly, I won't see any of this finish on my timber framing. So I just wanted to share that with you. And again, like I said, I made a offset, so you can see I've skill chains are offset, and then I've got a fence. So let me set this up. Uh, set it back a little bit so you can see. I'm going to make a cut with this, and then we'll measure the squareness and see what it looks like. All right, let me set this down and uh, get set up to make a cut. And where are we? Can I zoom this baby in? Sure, I can. All right. All right, so that's what we've got right there. I'm going to make the cut. I'm going to plug this baby in. And uh, I'll take off my offset. I'll be cutting against the fence. Give this baby some power. And we'll see what it looks like after that. I will take it and uh, we'll, we'll check it out for squareness. They actually look pretty good. I've already checked it, but I want to show you guys so you see what it looks like. All right, here we go. Like they say in airplane business, clear prop. So I'm just going to put it up here, run it straight across my fence. You gotta push in on your start button and make sure. Alright, That's what we have. Let me take my earmuffs off. Let me take the, the fence out of position. And we'll see what we can do to measure it up for squareness, see what it looks like. Move the fence out of the way. Put the handy dandy blow gun. Clean that up a little bit. Grab the square and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the camera around so you can see what the squareness of this cut looks like. Uh, I'm probably going to have to make some adjustments here on the zoom. I'm trying to get better at the camera for doing what I'm doing here. All right, so 
I put this squared up here. So you can see, let me get this whole held up there squarely. So you can see this gives you a pretty square cut. Let's check it this way. Um, see if I can't get right in there. So you can see this is a pretty square cut as well. Oh, let me get the square in the right position. Let's look down here. Uh, not any issue of consequence. So that's what you got. Let's take a look at this cut again. So you just saw it cut. You can see what you get for a top cut with that ratty edge. You get a ratty edge a little bit on the exit. So I'm, this is pine, so I'm just going to rub that off. I'm going to rub off on the top just so you can see what it looks like. And, and like I said, it comes off with the pine, comes off fairly easy. No splinters on my finger yet. So that's what you're getting. And this is what the finish looks like. I'm going to say, if I could turn it this way, with the, with the rings of the wood, you might have a 16th inch difference in with the, get my finger in here, in between the rings and the inside of a ring, you might, you might have a 16th or less in there. So overall, pretty good cut, pretty straight, pretty true. Um, so that's how I'm going to use it. As I get better at it, if I learn some more things, I'll share them with you. But that's this saw. I plan to use it, as I said, to do cut off on end of timbers. And for the most part, the cut finish that I will end up with, I won't even see. All right, give me some feedback. Click like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.